Hey, this is the Fight Nerd. I'm here now at Jamie Varner's Combat Academy with a guy who isn't Jamie Varner. We're here with Jay Haran, the Thoroughbred. Jay, how's it going? What's up, man? Chilling. Just uh, finishing up doing the seminar over here. Just <laughs> giving love back to my New Yorkers. That's right. You are a fellow New Yorker. You're originally from Long Island. Do you still have uh, friends and family over here? Yeah, all my friends and family yeah. are here. You know, born and raised. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody's here, my family. I just moved to Vegas about six years ago. You know, I definitely got fr friends and family there. Family meaning my uh, my brothers I train with, but um, you know at the end of the day my my uh, my immediate family lives here in uh, New York. So are there any like particular sites or any places like to go when you come back home? Oh yeah, of course, man. I gotta go. You know I, I took Martin. He's from uh, Denmark. I took him to the Corona Queens uh, last night to the Chimmy Trudy truck. Nice. You know he was looking at me like he had a th <laughs> like I had three eyes. Like were you, you taking me to that truck to eat? You know, he ended up getting a uh, plate of food, and he was loving it, man. He was like, yeah, now I see why. You know, and, um, you know, yo, I just love New York, man. I, every time I fly in here, you know, I miss it. Uh, you know, I take a b big, deep breath. You can smell the ocean and, um, you know, the leaves. And, you know, it's, it, Vegas is different. It's like desert, you know. So, I mean, it, it's a great place, a great city. You know, I just had to do what's, what's best for me. And at the time when I was moved, you know, out of my element to, you know, to become a better fighter. I hope you got Martin some uh, Lemon Ice King Corona while you were there, too. Nah. Oh, Corona? Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, he, we were both in training right now, so, you know. All right. Next time. Yeah, next time. Now, the last time we saw you was uh, against Joe Riggs back in Strike Force, and since then you've been a free agent on the market. So what's going on right now with that? Uh, actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not out, I'm not out of my contract yet. I mean, they still have a negotiating period, so. You know, there's nothing really I could do, but um, you know, day by day, man. I mean, you know, the situation is what it is, um, and you know, I I feel I, I have options right now in my in my you know at this point in my career, and you know, that's it, man. I'm just just laying back, training, and, and moving forward. I mean, I'm not putting too much stress on the situation, you know, like I was stressing before over stuff, and you know, I'm just moving forward. I mentioned you've got some options. Is the UFC one of those options right now? Um, like I said, I'm still under under a negotiating period with uh, Strike Force, but you know, at the end of the day, I do have options when it comes down to it. You know, we we, we really haven't got a chance to sit down and, and fully talk with UFC yet because we're under contract. You know, same with the no negotiating period. So, you know. Again, I'm doing what's in my power. I'm doing, um, you know, I'm in the gym every day. I'm, I'm getting sharper, you know, picking up new skills, you know, doing, making a little bit of changes. And, and, and that's all I can control, man, is my training. But, you know, again, I'm in a good place, man. You know, when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, I do have options. So, you know, that's it. I'm just moving in that direction, moving forward. Now, I'd heard one of the key elements in your renegotiation was that you wanted to be, have guaranteed TV spots. Now, why is that so important? You'd make sure that you're on TV. I mean, I mean, uh, you know that if you're not on TV, you don't get paid. I mean, really, really, you don't, you, you don't get your sponsor money. You know, you lose out on money. You know, I have people that want to see me fight. I have fans that want to see me fight. That that every time I'm not on TV, they don't get to see me fight. So, you know, as hard as as hard as I work, you know, I want to, you know, definitely get it, get it, get it. You know, the advantages of my sponsor money and everything else like that, and. You know, I want the fans to know who I am. You know, who here's this guy, Jay Haran, he wants to fight for a title, but, you know, nobody knows who I am because my fights aren't televised, so. It's like know, some kind of Jay Haran curse going <laughs> on. It's like he didn't get on the Affliction 2 show. Yeah. You're like, you're actually out after the main event, yeah. um, the last, uh, some other shows. Is there some, uh, did you, like, happen to just be born on, a, on an Indian burial ground or something? I mean, what's going on with that? I mean, I've just been through everything in my career, man. I, I embrace it, man. I mean, you know, I come from New York. I come from a rough city, so, I mean, you know, we, we just we just keep keep on getting up when we fall down. So I mean, that's 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 been my whole career. You know, so I mean, it, what don't kill me makes me strong, and and I really, you know, believe I've been through a lot of stuff in my career, and I'm you know I'm still here, I'm still healthy, I still feel good, I still wake up every morning knowing that this is where I want to do, and and you know this is what I want to you know I want to you know excel at this sport right here. So you know I'm doing everything in my power to do what I can, and, and that's training, staying focused, and staying in the gym. Now, one thing that bugged me, and I'm sure a lot of fans also, is we never saw Jay Haran versus Nick Diaz, at least not at this point, for the welterweight title. It seemed like you're almost getting passed up to that title. I mean, what do you think went on with that situation? 
No idea, man. I, I, I came, you know, I came in terms with my end of the bargain. I signed the contract. I trained for the fight. I showed up. That's all I could do. I mean, you know, I don't even care about, you know, that whole situation right now. Right now, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm just training and seeing what's 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 next for me. You know, right now I have no, you know, I don't know what's next for me. But you know, again, I'm around a lot of great people. You know, we got guys in the gym that are fighting on, on, you know, great fights coming up. So, you know, I've done that before in my career. I lived through other people's eyes, and, you know, that's all I'll do. I'll keep moving forward. I surround myself with great people, and, you know, that's what it's about. Now, do you think Strike Force is maybe kind of protecting their champions? I mean, we know what happened with uh, Alistair Overeem's situation. He's been holding that title hostage for like two years. I mean, do you think it's the same with Nick Diaz? I have no idea, man. I don't, you know what I mean? It's, 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 what they got going on there is, is 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 crazy to me. I don't understand it. So, you know, at the end, of, you know, I keep saying it, but at the end of the day, I can't control what what they're gonna do with their promotion. I can control what I'm gonna do, and that's go out and, and win my fights, and that's what I've been doing. So, you know, to all the stuff I go through, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still blessed to get out there and do what I do, and, and not let all this negativity affect me. And um, that's what I want to keep doing, you know, at the end of the day. You know, all this stuff hasn't affected me yet, and, you know, I'm going to keep it that way. Now, you mentioned uh, that you don't let this negativity get to you, and you were just kind of talking about that earlier in the seminar. You have a, a certain outlook when you go into fights, and that's to have a clear, focused mind. So tell our viewers a little bit about that. I mean, you know, I'm human, man. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I do have emotions, and, you know, sometimes, you know, there'll be, you know, one day out of the week where I'll be feeling down about my situation or something like that. But... You know, then I'll just look at all the stuff I've been through and all the positives. So, you know, it's kind of like focusing your energy on the positive stuff that you go through and not, you know, the negative. Because when you look at it, you know, from the bigger picture, the negative stuff is a small thing. It's stuff that is not that big a deal. So, you know, that's just one thing I do. I do a lot of um, mental training, you know, a lot of positive thoughts, a lot of visualization stuff. So. You know, again, my situation is not that bad. There's a lot of people out there dealing with a lot of worse stuff than I deal with with my career. So, you know, it's all good. Again, I'm blessed to do what I do. I get paid to fight. You know, that's a blessing for me. I'm a professional athlete, and I'm I'm riding this wave, baby, you know. All right. Now, tomorrow night, UFC 111 is going to be in Newark, New Jersey. Do you have any picks for the main event, George St. Pierre versus Dan Hardy? Uh, I think GSP is a little, you know, too well-rounded for uh, – Dan Hardy, not saying Dan Hardy don't have a shot. Everybody has a shot. The kid, uh, you know, he has some good striking ability. I trained with both of them. Hardy came down extreme about a year and a half ago. He's a real talented kid. I just think at this point right now that GSP is, uh, you know, more well-rounded than, than him, and, you know, that's what it's going to come down to in that fight, is, you know, who's more well-rounded. And, you know, definitely GSP has the edge on the grappling and, and the wrestling, so. You know, I think GSP, uh, you know, probably subs him with uh, or ground and pound TKO within uh, within three rounds. And how about a prediction for George St. Pierre versus Jay Heron too? Totally different fight. Totally, totally different fight. I mean, you know, that's a fight I want. You know, I definitely want to avenge all my losses. But, uh, you know, I'm taking baby steps, man. I mean, I'm, you know, GSP's not even on my radar right now. You know, I'm I'm just taking baby steps. I'm trying to just move forward from my from my next situation, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with Strike Force. We'll see what happens with UFC. I mean, you know, I got options. So again, I'm 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 happy about that. You know, at least I'm in a situation where I do have options. A lot of people are in situations where they can't go anywhere. They don't have any options. So I'm blessed for that reason. Check me out on my Twitter, Jay Haran at Jay Haran. My MySpace, my Facebook, uh, definitely thanks to my fans, especially my New York fans. A bunch of people came out for the seminar, support me and Martin Campman. I love all you guys. Every, all my haters, I love you too, you know. <laughs> Everything happens in circles. I need those people too to, you know, drive me in and, you know, make me uh, train that much harder. So, you know, everybody, thank you. All right, well, Jay Haran, UFC or Strike Force, wherever you go, we wish you good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. This video is sponsored by Skin Industries, dominating fashion for the past 11 years with hundreds of designs for men, women, and children. Skin Industries is your everyday lifestyle clothing brand. Start living in skin today and check out SkinIndustries.com.